Yeah. 분위기는 chill, fancy snakes on my belt. Yeah, I'm feeling first class. Yo, it on cash flow. We get here around 6:30. Morning, guys. The new Yonex machine is called the Precision 9. It's revolutionary. Everything's done faster and more precise. Swinging constantly, it takes a lot of concentration, but yeah. I enjoy it and it's therapeutic. It's good being around the players, you have a connection with them. The range of tension difference is amazing. The tension being low will create more power for the player. The tension being higher will create more control for the player. And some of the athletes that are out there, you would think that they've got a low tension because they're hitting the ball so hard, but they're actually got really high tension. They're just physically strong. This event to me is amazing because it's a grand slam on my home turf. I couldn't imagine anything better. In today's webinar, you will hear from Mark Goodman. For over 15 years, Mark has been a member of the renowned Yonex stringing team. Using his vast experience, Mark will provide a practical insight into one of the less well understood facets of the game, but one which can have a major impact on player performance. Racket strings. Welcome to uh, the latest in the TIA's Business of Tennis webinars for 2021. Um, hopefully we're going to demystify uh, the world of tennis strings. Tennis string is the fastest growing part of the uh, tennis industry at, uh, at the moment and over the last few years there's been many many developments in tennis string so hopefully we'll have a look at those as we go through. I'm going to give you an introduction to the different types of tennis string on the market today um, and look at some key considerations for juniors, older players, tension, string types. One thing I'm not going to do is teach you how to string in this seminar so if you thought you were going to learn to string then you're not. Um, and also at the end we'll just have a very brief introduction to racket customization. So first of all, my name is Mark Goodman, um, I'm the owner of Topspin Tennis which is a racket sports specialist. We have six uh, pro shops around East Anglia and in Buckinghamshire and we have the highest qualified stringing team in the UK. We string over 9,000 rackets a year and I'm a European Racket Stringers Association Master Professional Stringer. I'm a little bit of a rare beast as well because I string both tennis and badminton at a professional level. And I've strung at the Australian Open, Wimbledon, the Rio and London Olympics. Um, and I've been part of the Yonex stringing team for over 15 years. Um, and with them, I've strung in Australia, China, Japan, uh, the Olympics, badminton all over Europe and in Hong Kong. And I regularly work with both club players and with performance players in both badminton and tennis. So it's generally thought that the performance of a racket is roughly 50% the frame, but 50% the strings. So a lot of people know a lot about rackets and a lot of people demo rackets, but very few people actually demo strings. And a lot of that is because people don't understand about strings. So hopefully um, I'm going to demystify some of the strings so that you can actually make a better choice. Okay, before we get into the nitty gritty of the strings, we'll just do some, uh, have a look at some basic information. So the ball is in contact with strings for less than four milliseconds. So there's a lot going on uh, in that time between the strings and the ball. Strings are the only thing that should come in contact with a ball. I know we all hit them on the frame occasionally, but we need to concentrate on getting the right string set up. It's therefore essential to get the right combination of the type of string, that's the construction, the reference tension, that's high, how much the string is being pulled in the machine. The gauge, which is the thickness or diameter of the, the string. Um, really to get the maximum performance out of your racket, your strings and your play. There's no such thing as a best setup. Uh, every player is different and that's where talking to a racket sports professional will actually help you find the best setup for you. We'll just talk a little bit about the major types of strings that are on the market at the moment. Still, probably the best string is natural gut. I have a piece of natural gut here. You can see it is very, very flexible and pliable. Um, natural gut is actually made from cow intestine. Um, it has often been referred to as uh, cat gut, but uh, I can assure you cat guts have never been used. Um, in uh, uh, history, sheep's gut has been used, but these days it's all cow. Um, it actually takes two cows to make one set of uh, tennis string. 
so you can and a very long production process so you can see why it is very expensive the other thing is the one of the properties of gut is it has a lot of collagen in it which is used in the beauty industry so there's a big demand from what was once a waste product um, now into the beauty industry and into making tennis string many professionals still use natural gut um, I don't think any of them use natural gut both ways in the racket um, they usually use it one way and another string in, a, in, in the other way. The next closest thing to natural gut and the softest thing is actually a multi-filament string. So this is made up of millions of tiny fibres all twisted together and coated. Um, so it's very uh, stretchy, it's great for tennis elbow, um, its durability is not so good um, but is a very soft string and is probably the closest to natural gut. The next category is, um, is a nylon string. So this is now a solid extrusion of nylon and it has wraps on the outside. Um, not quite as soft as multifilament, still absolutely fine for uh, people with um, uh, arm injuries, gives quite a lot of power and has a bit more durability than, than multifilament. The explosion in the market has been around polyester string. So in the last two or three years, there's been hundreds and hundreds of new polyesters coming onto the market. This is a single extrusion of polyester. As you can see, it's very quite hard and stays put, unlike the multifilaments which bend. So you can get a lot more durability from this string. Um, there's a lot more spin potential. Um, so players are moving over to this um, in, in a big way. Not great if you've got any injuries. There are also many, many variations of all of these strings on the market now. Some are PU soaked, some are um, what we call multi monos. So they've taken a very, very fine um, fibre of polyester, twisted them all up together a bit like multi filaments. There's textured strings, which are to give more spin. There's very smooth strings, which mean there's more snapback and give more spin. So there's a huge variety on, on the market. All strings have advantages and disadvantages, as I've mentioned, and we'll go through those in a minute. Um, but that's the basic strings on the market today. What I want to do now is actually demonstrate on the machine how elastic each of these are so that you can see how it's going to perform in your tennis racket. OK, so I'm just going to take the racket out of the machine for the moment. So I'm going to take just a length of multi-filament string, put it in the machine, so I want you to notice that it's pulled it, stretched the, uh, the string to about this point. If I then take a nylon string, do exactly the same thing. So I'm pulling at exactly the same tension. And you can see it's pulling to here. So it hasn't pulled it as far. It's because this string is not as flexible, or uh, not as elastic as the previous one. Okay. And then finally, I'll do the same with the polyester. And you can see there it's hardly move at all. And that's because there's very little elasticity in there. So why is that important? Well, if you're looking at the softest string, um, I'm using a racket here with no strings in, um, just with the header card, because I want to show you that the ball impacting onto the strings, the strings will come back a long way, and then the energy will be returned and the ball will go very fast. So having a multi-filament string that does that, you're going to get more power. The other thing is with a multi-filament, it's better on the arm. So that energy that's gone into the strings and has gone back into the ball is not coming down the racket and into your arm. By contrast, if we look at um, a strung racket with polyester in, at ball impact, the strings are not going to move very much at all. So the energy from the ball has to go somewhere and that typically comes down the racket and into your arm. And so 
That's why if you have any injuries, you should stick with a multifilament. However, lots of people like a really firm string bed. So polyester is good for, very, you know, for, for some people. Um, and again, it's, a, it's about selecting the right string for your setup. So by, by contrast, if we have a racket with um, a harder polyester string in, when the ball makes contact with the string, the strings don't go back at all. So that energy has to go somewhere and it comes down the racket and into your arm. Um, however, lots of people do like a very solid and stiff feeling string bed. So just because it's not great for tennis elbow doesn't mean to say you should never use it. It really is up to the player and again it's about selecting the right string for you. Um, so we've got a chart which shows the features of the different types of string um, and it goes through uh, a power scale, a durability scale and a comfort scale. So you can see that for gut it's the most powerful, the least durable but actually the most comfortable. Whereas at the other end of the scale, the, mo the monofilament or the polyester is the least powerful, has the most durability and is the least comfortable. So as a player, you have to decide where you want to be on that chart. Um, and this is again, one of the things about deciding the correct strings for your play. Okay, so now we're gonna have a little talk about tension. Um, and by that, it's not the feeling you get when you're watching your players or your, um, your kids playing, but it's actually the tension in the strings. Now many people talk about tension, they go into their stringer and say I want 58 pounds, I want 50 pounds and what we call that in the industry is the reference tension. So that is how much the machine is actually going to pull the string at, at each time. But that's only one factor when we're talking about the, the, the string setup. So for each of the different string types I've already shown you, if you pull it at exactly the same tension, reference tension, you will actually get a different tension in the centre of the, the racket just because it stretches more. Some, some strings, such as natural gut, are often pre-stretched, um, so that makes the difference. The machine that you're using, the actual construction of the strings, um, the racket, uh, the size of the head, the number of strings and crosses, all of these things make a difference. Um, and the correct way of actually assessing all of this is something called dynamic tension, or DT. So this is effectively how tight the strings are in the centre of the string bed. And all of those things I've just mentioned will have an effect on that. Now it's not very easy to measure that. You need a little device such as this, which we clip on the strings to measure the, 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 the DT. Um, and if you're a club player or anything, you're not going to be carrying one of these around. But more and more players, professional players, are now wanting their strings strung to a certain dynamic tension. Um, there is also uh, a discussion around tension loss. So depending on the types of string, like the gut, the monofilament, the multifilament that I was just speaking about, they will all, all lose tension. But they lose tension at different rates. Um, we have another chart uh, which shows you, it, it's, it's uh, expanded out, but shows you the difference between static and dynamic tension loss. So if we string the machine, if I take it off the, rack, off the machine here and it's strung, in the first 24 hours it's going to lose quite a lot of tension um, and it hasn't hit a ball. And that's called static tension loss because it's just sitting there. As soon as you start hitting a tennis ball with this, it will lose some more tension and that's called dynamic tension loss. So you, you tend to find that the current professionals are asking for their rackets to be strung as close to the start of their match as possible to reduce the static tension loss. And then you'll see them changing, if you watch carefully, you'll see them changing rackets maybe after every set, maybe after every ball change, maybe after every hour, or each player is slightly different. And that's because they've noticed that the tension in the racket has gone down and that's the dynamic tension loss. So when you're talking about tension, it's far more um, uh, complicated than just the tension the machine is just pulling out. OK, so we're going to take a little look about uh, stringing for juniors now. Um, and this may also be applicable to older players as well. So what's the most important thing that we need to take into account for juniors? The first thing is injury prevention. The second thing is injury prevention. And the third thing is the injury prevention. So you'll get the idea. Um, so what do we need to do that? We need to look at a string that has the softest string possible um, to give the most elastic string as possible so that the vibration is reduced. So when they're holding the racket, hitting the ball, the vibration doesn't come down into their arm. Juniors are growing very fast 
all of their limbs and muscles and things are growing. So we need to look after those from a, a tennis string point of view. Unfortunately, we see many examples of juniors coming in to have their racket strung and they have like polyester in a 26 inch racket and all that's gonna do is give them an injury. So we must try and avoid that. So by using the softest uh, string, we then also need to lower the reference tension, which is the tension the machine is pulling at. And again, that allows the ball to be, the, the strings to be more elastic uh, and to reduce the vibration. However, all parents will know if they have performance juniors, you have a dilemma. Because using a soft string from the chart earlier on, the, the um, durability is lower. So they're going to be breaking more strings. So there is a decision and a balancing act between keeping the softest string in the racket as you can and with um, a high frequency of breakage. And you're looking at injury prevention against breakage. But then the cost of physios, the, the cost of the, the children being out of the game for a while. So it's a really tricky balancing act. Okay, the second dilemma when we're talking about with juniors is if you have a lower tension, and a more elastic string, you're going to get more power, as we showed earlier on. Um, so as the junior's in, uh, technique improves, the racket head goes faster, the swing needs is better, they need more control and less power. So again, we now have a balancing act about needing to increase the tension, maybe using a less elastic string, um, or maybe used to a different string pattern. So there are all these decision points to be made, and uh, I would just recommend that as your child grows, they, you need to be in regular contact with uh, your stringer, with your racket sports specialist, and they will be able to help you manage the change of strings as the child develops through. Um, so that the, really the strings will grow with the child. But I would say with the juniors, if there's any arm, wrist, shoulder problems um, beginning to develop because you've changed the string, then you need to review the current setup. It may be that they're changing their technique on court which is causing it. It may be a whole host of reasons, but have a look at the string setup because that may be one of the issues. Um, the other thing is that we noticed is some of the green ball kids, kids using the, the, the green balls, um, they start breaking a few strings so they tend to have a, um, uh, a more durable string. Um, but when they start playing yellow ball, the impact of the ball, of a yellow ball, compared to a green ball is significantly different. So you should go back to using a very soft string when they're using yellow ball. When they're transitioning, it's a good idea if they've got two rackets to have one strung up for green ball and one up for yellow ball. Again, we're looking to prevent injuries, especially when they're moving the change into a harder ball. What do professionals use? Um, there is no answer, no single answer at all. Um, Looking at the statistics from the Australian Open in, in 2021 where Yonex are the official stringers, the reference tensions are all over the place. I think the lowest reference tension was 16 pounds and the highest was 88 pounds. So these are all guys that are guys and girls that are at the top of their game using wildly different tensions. In terms of string types, I mentioned earlier that many of the professionals are still using natural gut. They tend to use polyester either in the crosses or the mains and natural gut in the other way around. Some are a full bed of polyester, some uh, have a, a nylon string, so there's a huge variation. Um, so every player has got to, to the, 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 the correct setup for them. Every player pretty much has their racket customised, so they're all the same, they might be more weight in the head, more weight in the handle, and we'll talk about that a lot in, in a minute. Um, but how do they decide all of that? Well, basically, they try it. So I would urge you that if you haven't tried out different strings, try out some different strings. Talk to your stringer, try some different tensions, some different construction types, and again, you'll get more enjoyment when you find the combination which is suitable for you. Being in the racket sports uh, shop, we get many, many questions. So some of the common questions are, people ask us, can I get some spin strings? Well, the answer is yes. Uh, there are many strings on the market designed to help you develop spin. Um, but by and large, the majority of the spin will come from your racket head speed. So um, whilst you can get uh, strings that have got texture on them or very smooth, um, which will help spin, uh, you will get more spin if you develop your racket head speed. 
Another question, is it worth buying cheap strings or cheap restrings? Um, my answer to both of those is, is, is no, it's not worth it. Um, the, the large manufacturers such as Yonex have got a huge research and development team trying to create better strings all the time. Um, it's very easy to buy strings on eBay or something like that at a very cheap price, um, but they haven't had the development and won't play as well um, as, as if you choose one of the major brands. Um, similarly for restrings, you need to ask your stringer what qualifications they have um, because hopefully you'll have seen through the presentation so far there's lots and lots of information in there and your stringer needs to know that if they're going to produce the best uh, restrings for you. Is there a best string? Well hopefully you now know that there isn't. Um, there, is, there is a best string set up for you but there isn't a best string. They're all different. Another question we have is, should players keep string in their bag? I would say that for all juniors who are playing in tournaments, they should keep string in their bag. If you go to a tournament and need to have a restring, then you need to be using the same string. And not only that, you need to know what reference tension and what machine is being used. How long should your strings last? Well, that's a, an impossible question. Um, it depends on how long you play. Um, how much topspin you produce. We have players that break strings every two hours. We have string, uh, players that haven't broken a string for years. So there is no answer to that. Um, and if you think the strings are broken too quickly, then maybe you're playing really well. Maybe you're doing a load of uh, topspin. Maybe you've got the wrong string in there. So there's no answer to that. But again, it's something to discuss. So that's really all I'm going to talk about strings. But I'm just going to have a brief introduction to customization. Um, so when you talk about the weight of a racket, have you ever thought, does that include strings? Does that include the bumper guard? Does it include the grip? How do you know what it includes? What can you change in a racket? You, we've obviously spoken a lot about changing the strings, the types of strings, the reference tension and everything like that. So that's one thing. The head size, you can't change that. It's, that's how it is. That racket is always going to be that size. The flexibility. You or I can't bend a racket, but there is a machine that can measure the flex of a racket. That's in, inherently built into the racket and you can't change that. Apart from that, you can actually pretty much change everything else. So the length. Most rackets are 27 inches. You do get slightly longer ones, but you can actually increase the length or you can shorten a racket. So that's one thing you can customise. The static weight. So if you put that on a scale, how much does it weigh? So you can add weight to the racket to make it weigh more. So the static weight you can change. The balance point. The balance point of a racket is where the racket is equidistant like that. So if you add some weight to the, the end, you're going to get the balance changed to that. If you add weight to the head, you'll get the balance changing to that. So you can change the balance. Another thing is called the swing weight. And this is basically how heavy the racket feels when you're swinging. And this is the, actually the best measurement and is the most important measurement. So you can change the way this racket feels. If you added more weight at the end here, then you'll change the balance and it will feel heavier when you're playing. So that's more important actually than static weight. And of course the grip size. You can change, you can enlarge it, you can make it smaller, you can change the shape of the grip. So there's many things you can do about customising a racket to your, uh, to your preferences. So one of the most common things that uh, we're asked to do in, in terms of customisation is what we call racket matching. So, and it's just that. So if you have two rackets, um, you want to make them both identical. Um, because most rackets are still uh, have a large proportion of um, uh, manual intervention in making a racket, there are differences to each racket. So each manufacturer will have a tolerance. Yonex is very good, it has a plus or minus one gram tolerance. Um, but basically you're trying to make multiple rackets exactly the same. Why do we want to do that? Okay, so first of all, it eliminates your favourite racket. So quite often people have two rackets, but they have a favourite. And almost certainly that's because it's a little bit heavier or the balance point is a little bit different. So we want to make all your rackets favourites. Um, it also eliminates equipment failure at crucial times. If you're playing third set tie break, 
couple of match points and your string breaks and you pick up another racket and it doesn't play the same, you're going to notice it. So you want to be able to swap rackets without even noticing the difference. Also eliminates equipment failures as an excuse. So when you come off court having just lost and you go, oh, I had to use my second racket, it's terrible. So it can eliminate that. So if you make sure all your rackets are the same. And again, it goes back to making all of your equipment a lot more professional. The other aspect of racket customization, apart from matching, is you actually want to get something more out of your racket. So you might want to get more power, you want to get more control, you want more maneuverability, you want more feel. So depending on what you want, um, somebody who does customization work can actually uh, change that. So you'll find that all the professionals will find a setup that works for them and then and they'll do that by on court, putting some more weight on, taking some weight off till they get to the right setup. When they found that setup, they'll then go back into the racket matching and making sure all of their rackets match that setup. And that's something that uh, you know, we'll, we'll go into more customization, hopefully in a, in a future seminar. Okay, so we've come to the end of our webinar. Um, just to summarize, uh, strings and racket stringing is a science. I hope you've now seen that some of the things I've been talking about there's a lot more involved than uh, maybe that you thought before. And we've really only touched the tip of the iceberg, so we, there's a lot more that can be, uh, be, be discussed. Um, really, everybody should be aware of their string setup. So players should be aware. They might be able to get another 5% performance out if they're aware of their stringing. Coaches should be aware, especially for their junior players. They need to look after their juniors. And if their juniors are injured, as a coach, you're gonna lose some income. Parents should be aware. So you need to take responsibility for your, your son or daughter's um, racket strings and you need to, to be aware um, so that you can manage that together with your racket stringer. And really take time to select the optimum setup for you, but be prepared to change it. So over time, as, as your technique develops or if you're getting a little bit older, then talk to your racket stringer who can adjust your, um, your strings, tensions and whatever. Um, but above all, one size doesn't fit all. So there is no best string. There is no best string setup. Uh, you have to find something that works the, in the best possible way for you. So that's it. Hope you've enjoyed it and you've learned something. Um, we hope to follow this up with a, um, another webinar on racket customization in the future. Um, but thank you very much for watching. Hey guys, I'm officially in the Yonex stringing room. This is where the magic happens. Maybe one of the most important rooms of the entire event. And now I'm about to hand some rackets in and I'll give you a tour of the place. Hey Pim, what's going on? How are you? What are you up to? Yeah, yourself? Uh, not too bad. Is that one of my rackets, is it? Uh, actually, yes. I just string in your racket. Wow, nice. Uh, would you like to try? All right, I'll give it a go. Right. I'll give it a go. Okay, I'm not really sure where to start here. Right, okay, here we go. I'm a natural. Pull through or yeah. under first so or over? If you see this string under, yes, over, over, over right. right. Okay. Yeah. Oh, my hands are too big. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, you go like this. Oh my goodness! Like I, that. How, how am I supposed to do that? <laughs> I would not have enough patience for this. I'll tell you that much. My yeah. No, I can't yeah. do it, pin. I can't <laughs> do it. I'll leave them. I'll leave it to these guys. Yeah, yeah. Alright, Pim, you got to show me how to stencil this racket. So first thing we have to look at is make sure the back cap's up. Yep. The Yonex logo. Yep. So one hand hold here. Oh yeah. Yes. Okay, okay here's one. Right hand. Okay. And then you just start it. Yeah. Alright, look at me go. Yeah. I've never seen someone stencil so good in my life. Alright, turn it over. Yeah, like that. Perfect. Finish that off. Look at that. Yep. Next year I'll work in the stringing department. Yes. I'll be the stencil. I only I only do the stencil. Thank you. All right, I've got to head off now. I've got to practice. Thank you. Thanks, guys. See you later. I told you, Yonex is the best in the business. Thanks for watching this webinar. And if you have any questions or queries on the subject, please email phil at tiauk.org. You can watch previous webinars on the business of tennis by going to our website www.tiauk.org